Um, hi, welcome to Craigavon Neurology Centre. I'm Dr. Raymond Forbes and we've got our two students, Lee and Martin, here. And we're going to talk through just a quick neurological examination. Um, this is an examination that is, would be useful for non-neurologists and it allows you to screen for uh, useful signs that if you find them um, have significance. The key thing here is that this is a core examination um, and you've got to be thinking on your feet because there will be other signs that will be relevant depending on what the history your patient has given. The equipment you require, you require a Snelling chart for reading from six feet. You need an ophthalmoscope, you always need a stethoscope and a tendon hammer. So let's go and do it. So the first thing that happens is that your patient walks in to see you. And when your patient walks in you should be observing your patient to see if there's a gait abnormality. If your patient cannot walk, if they're wheeled in to see you, you need to know why that is. Then your patient gives a history to you and when the patient talks to you, you can work out have they got a language problem, are they confused. So that information in itself is a very good measure of how their brain and nervous system is functioning. Then we just go on to the core examination. So we start off with visual acuity. So this is a six foot distance, Snelling chart. Can you, can you cover one eye? Read the second bottom line there. E M O. P S U Y. And cover the other eye. E M O P S U Y. So at a distance of six feet, that's six six vision. Next we do visual feel. Look at my face. How many fingers am I holding up? Two. Two. One. Okay. Next we do eye movements. Look at my finger. Follow it slowly. Slowly horizontally. And then down. And then up and back to the middle. And while I've been doing that, I've been noticing the eyelid position, which is symmetric. I've also seen that his pupils are the same size. Next, we do the thumb scope. Lights off. Look straight ahead. And while I'm doing that, I'm doing direct, direct, light reflex, and then indirect and indirect. We're looking at the other eye. Look straight ahead. I'm aiming for the opposite mastoid process. Find a vein at the back of the retina, follow it through to the middle to the optic disc. Optic disc looks nice and healthy. You can see veins pulsating at the back. It's always handy you can learn to use a thalmoscope in either hand because then you don't obstruct your patient's line of sight. Again, aim for the opposite mastoid process. Find a vein or artery, follow it round to the middle. There's the optic disc, nice and bright. The veins in the middle pulsing properly. Next, close your eyes tight as you can. Keep them really tight. Open them again, lips together, really strong. And again, can't overcome the weakness there. Next, arms out straight. This is limb drift. Turn your arms round, close your eyes. We we'll count to about 10. And the arms maintain their own position, which is normal. Take your finger now, touch the tip of your nose. Touch my finger. Same with the other side. No evidence of ataxia. Shoulder abduction, push up hard as you can. Arms out straight, fingers wide apart, strong as you can, strong as you can. No upper limb weakness of upper motor neuron pattern. Lift your knee up, push up hard, push up hard. Kick your leg out straight, kick your leg out straight. You need to slip your shoes off there, please. And socks quickly. The plantar responses. Let your feet dangle there, so the knee reflex, knee reflex, then the ankle jerk, so you've got to passively dorsiflex the foot, passively dorsiflex the foot, and strike the, the Achilles tendon, and then for the plantar response, you stroke the outside border of the foot, and it's the first movement of the first metatarsal joint you're interested in, first movement of the metatarsal joint, nice flexion there. Then you want to quickly listen to the top of the heart, which gives you an idea of whether there's a murmur or if the pulse is regular or not. Then after that, you've just got to try and identify any signs that you think are relevant to the case. So if the patient might have carpal tunnel, you might do a tunnel sign. If it's an upper uh, limb radiculopathy, you might do upper limb reflexes. If they've got a headache, you might examine the neck. And that's really the core of the neurological examination. Thank you.